everyone our subject today is apnea in pediatric apnea is the cessation of breathing for a period of time age dependent or for any period if accompanied by pallor cyanosis bradycardia and or hypotonia apnea may be due to a central origin an element of airway obstruction or a combined combination of both elements the differential diagnosis of apnea in the neonates is extensive and includes many conditions unique to the neonate. Neither neonatal apnea nor apnea of prematurity is discussed here. When parents report that their child stopped breathing, beginning condition, benign conditions such as periodic breathing or breath holding spell, must be differentiated from more worrisome etiologies. Apnea can be manifestation of a variety of serious conditions and in children it is frequently part of constellation of symptoms including choking, gagging or change in color or tone, described as an apparent life-threatening event. Because of the broad differential diagnosis of apneic event, there is no consequence regarding as a standardized recommended evaluation. A careful history and physical examination remaining uh, the critical diagnostic elements. Multiple experts agree that subsequent testing should be guided by the history and physical examination because at least 50% of acute life-threatening event cases will have an identifiable etiology. The history for an apneic event should include any associated illness, the relationship of the, of the event, event to the sleeping and eating, and the presence or absence of associated symptoms such as cyanosis, bradycardia, altered level of consciousness and posturing or abnormal tonic-clonic movement. A birth and developmental history, a history of previous similar events, and a family history inquiring about apnea, ALTE, genetic disorder, or infant death should be obtained. A social history should ask about potentially toxic exposures, including drugs or medication in the home, tobacco smoke exposure, and potential carbon monoxide exposure. Careful questioning should be done regarding whether any intervention was needed and how quickly the child recovered from the event. For infants who were sleeping, inquire about sleep position, bedding, and covering are important. The review of system should include information about symptoms of airway obstruction, including chronic mouth breathing, noisy, noisy daytime respiration, snoring, and restlessness during sleep. The physical examination should be complete with a careful attention to vital signs, head circumference in infant, signs of airway obstruction, skin finding or for bruising or sign of trauma and facial dysmorphism. A careful ENT examination for fresh blood in the nose or mouth is important. It may suggest abuse. Dysmorphic feature may be associated with the craniofacial syndromes predisposing to airway obstruction like Biri-Robin syndrome or genetic or metabolic disorder. Airway hemangioma are often associated with hemangioma on the face, neck, or upper trunk. After performing history and physical examination, how to approach to the child with apnea? After history and examination, if it is associated with the obvious preceding change in mental status or, or loss of conscience, 
this is may include patient may need uh, drug or toxicology screen, serum glucose, consider imaging, metabolic workup, differential diagnosis may include drugs, toxin, hypoglycemia, intracranial hemorrhage, child abuse, or metabolic disorder. Is the patient ill or irritable appearance, sign of a symptom suggestive of infection? Patient may need CBC, a blood culture, LP, CSF study, a nasal swab for respiratory syncytial virus, uh, and pertussis. Consider metabolic workup if uh, recurrent CNS uh, imaging, CT or MRI, uh, if suspected uh, child abuse. Infection, a differential diagnosis may include infection, sepsis, respiratory, uh, CNS infection like meningitis, intracranial hemorrhage, child abuse, or metabolic disorder. Is there associated symptom consistent with the acute life threatening event? color change, tone change, choking or gagging. If it is yes, this is maybe obstructive apnea associated with feeding, choking, gagging, or mixed obstructive and central apnea. Patient may need evaluation for uh, gastroesophageal uh, reflex, airway imaging or uh, scope. Uh, nasopharyngeal swab for respiratory syncytial uh, virus and pertussis. Differential diagnosis may include GER, infection, respiratory syncytial virus, pertussis, airway, foreign body, suffocation, airway anomaly or malformation, micrognathia, perirobin syndrome, macroglossia, biquid weedman syndrome, airway, cyst, hemangioma, or malacia adenotonsillar hypertrophy, nasal obstruction, obesity may in severe cases may cause obstructive sleep apnea. As we said, if it is obstructive or it is central apnea, if the patient uh, is uh, acute life threatening event sign and symptom, focus evaluation based on uh, clinical uh, features presenting uh, symptom or consider when uh, history and physical examination non-contributory ECG, uh, urine analysis and culture, nasopharyngeal swab for respiratory syncytial and pertussis, neuroimaging evaluate for GER. Differential diagnosis may include uh, neurological causes like seizure, intracranial hemorrhage, CNS infection, Arnold Chiari malformation, cardiac causes, arrhythmia, long QT syndrome, Wolf Parkinson Weiss syndrome, congenital heart disease, infection, myocarditis, pericarditis, metabolic, drug, toxin, child abuse, other infection like UTI, respiratory syncytial virus, pertussis, and idiopathic. If the patient has uh, no sign of symptom uh, associated with acute life threatening event, so uh, symptom of airway obstruction without constellation of uh, acute life threatening event symptom, if it is yes, differential diagnosis may include laryngospasm, obstructive sleep apnea, swallowing in coordination, airway abnormality, micrognathia, perirobin syndrome, microglossia, biquid weedman syndrome, airway cyst, hemangioma or malacia, adenotonsillar hypertrophy or nasal obstruction. Uh, if it is no, differential diagnosis may include the breath holding spell, periodic breathing, congenital central hypoventilation syndrome, caregiver fabrication illness, child abuse, metabolic disorder, or idiopathic. Uh, investigation may be needed. Urine toxicology screen are simple to perform and may reveal causative etiology for apnea parpiturate, salicylate, epiac, boric acid, and cocaine are example. Carbon monoxide poisoning can also be an etiology. Neuroimaging should be considered because child abuse is always part of the differential diagnosis of apnea in children. 
hypoglycemia is likely to be primarily cause of apnea only in a neonate, but it uh, may accompany serious disorder leading to apnea in older children. The possibility of child abuse should always be considered when evaluating an apneic event, inflicted neurotrauma, deliberate suffocation, and poisoning attempts may be etiologies. A history of sudden infant death syndrome or recurrent acute life-threatening event, especially at late age in a family or a history of recurrent event while in uh, the care of a single caregiver could be suspicious for caregiver fabricating illness, previously called Munchausen proxy uh, syndrome by proxy. Congenital metabolic disorder, example fatty acid oxidation disorder, urea cycle defect are be, uh, being increasingly recognized. A history of symptoms occurring in association with the fasting, altered mental status, recurrent episode, family history of infant death, and an occurrence beyond one year of age should raise suspicion for metabolic disorder. Serum glucose, ammonia, and pH should be obtained if suspicious of a metabolic disorder. If possible, sample of blood and urine should be obtained during the period of acute symptom and frozen for future test if indicated. Respiratory infection frequently associated with apnea include the respiratory syncytial virus, uh, bronchiolitis, and pertussis. Localized upper airway infection, example tonsillitis, peritonsillar, or retropharyngeal abscesses, Croup epiglottitis can result in obstructive apnea. Infant may appear to be choking or struggling to breathe during an event, suggesting an element of airway obstruction, obstructive apnea. They may exhibit absence of any respiratory effort, central apnea, or mixture of both may occur. The term breath holding spell is somewhat of a misnomer because the episodes are not due to int intentional breath holding. Cyanotic or blue breath holding spell are described pro as prolonged expiratory apnea or a sudden lack of, of, of inspiratory effort, often during crying. In pallid breath holding spell, a reflex vagal bradycardia is uh, responsible for the event. Both are usually triggered by injury, anger or frustration, apnea, brief loss of consciousness, tonic posturing, and occasionally anoxic seizure can follow. A breath holding spell typically occurs between age 6 months and 18 months although they may be seen in children up to six years of age. Children recover quickly from those, these events and no diagnostic evaluation is indicated, although affected children should be assessed for iron deficiency and treated if it is present. Periodic breathing is a non-pathologic breathing pattern that interrupts an infant uh, regular rhythm breathing pattern. A brief 5 to 10 second pause in breathing are followed by period of rapid respiration for several seconds. No respiratory distress is associated. It is most common in premature infant but is also seen in full term infant until several months of age. Congenital central hypoventilation syndrome is a rare but serious disorder of decreased central respiratory drive. It usually presents with the apnea at birth, although late onset. Milder cases may present with the unexplained hypoventilation, particularly with the anesthesia or sedation, medica sedation medication. These patients will likely manifest 
sign of chronic hypoventilation, example pulmonary hypertension or polycythemia. Thank you for your listening.